okay so in my previous video i explained how uh, we can uh, mutate this or engineer this receptor which is a d2 dopamine receptor which is basically binding to this drug resperidone so briefly i will explain what i have done in the previous session uh, in my previous session what we have done is that uh, we have replaced this amino acid which is aspartate with the tryptophan so how exactly i did this if you want to check it out please uh, go to my previous video which is a part one video about protein engineering and in this video i will explain how this introduction or replacement of an amino acid in ucsf chimera has or may have caused a steric hindrance into the protein active site okay so for that what we need to do is that we have to first select uh, the amino acid which is in the yellow color so i replace this amino acid in my previous video so you can just select this uh, video sorry select this uh, residue so what you will do is you will press the control button and select any atom of this amino acid with the left click keep the control button pressed and hit the up arrow on the keyboard so this will basically select the entire residue as it has been shown over here with the green boundaries. Uh, so to check whether this amino acid is causing any kind of hindrance to the neighboring amino acids, we can first um, go to this option which says tools. Uh, then we can go to the surface binding analysis option over here, just hover your cursor over it and then just move it around. Uh, okay and go to the second option which says find clashes and contacts so you just click it over and the new window will open on the left hand side so you keep this window open for a while and the first thing we need to do over here is to designate means it will designate the selected amino acid which is uh, over here on the left hand side in the yellow color so you just click on designate so now it says 14 atoms designated. So this 14 atoms belongs to which amino acid? The amino acid which we have replaced. Okay. So in this case, is it is tryptophan. Now what you need to do is, you got to select all these three options, the first three options under the tab which says treatment of clash and contacts. Okay. Keep all the other things as, is, as it is. You don't need to do any changes over here. And you simply click on apply. Okay. Don't press ok because if you press on ok then this window will go away we need to have this window over here for a while so we'll just just press on apply okay so as soon as you see this what is happening that it is trying to show you the uh, clashes that is basically occurring okay so the next thing that we need to do is that we have to identify the amino acids where the clashes are been done so uh, you just write it anywhere uh, that which are the amino acids that are being clashed or which are been uh, showing any kind of hindrance to this newly introduced amino acid into this protein. So for that what you need to do is you need to note it down somewhere. So it is valine uh, 87 and uh, tyrosine 416. So you just uh, make a notepad and you can just type it anywhere. Okay. So just make a notepad and just type the amino acid numbers which you are finding the clash with so it is valine 87 okay the next amino acid is tyr416 okay and the amino acid that we have already replaced is as you know for now this is 414 which is a tryptophan so it is 114 okay so the next thing that we will do is that we will select all these three amino acids uh, so for that you just go to clear selection okay so keep this notepad file open over here for a while just for a few seconds i will show you what exactly we need to do so we need to first of all select all these three amino acids one after the other so as i just have kept my cursor over here okay it is showing me well in 87 so what you do is you press a control button and press it over it with the left click okay so it has selected the uh, residue then you simply go to this option which says uh, actions atoms and bonds and just press on the show so what it will do is it will show you the um, the side chain of this amino acid similarly 
uh, what you need to do is that we have all the three amino acids which are clashing over here so we have to select all these three amino acids together okay so for that what you do is you again press ctrl and shift why ctrl and shift because we have to make another selection without removing the selected value in 87 okay so when you press ctrl and shift together and then you click on the atom of the other another amino acid that you want to choose so you simply press on any of this atom of the amino acid that you want to choose so it is uh, tyrosine 416 so simply press with one click left click like this and remove the shift button keep the control button pressed and hit the up arrow onto the keyboard so it will now select the another amino acid now you need to do the similar thing for the uh, tryptophan 114 that is that we have muted it so you again press control shift together click on any of the atom of this amino acid release the shift button but keep the control button pressed and hit the up arrow so now what we have done is that we have selected all these three amino acids which are making the clashes right so now once this is done once the selection is done uh, the notepad is not required so i'm simply closing it so i will not save it for now uh, we want this box which is the find clashes context over here kept open okay and on to this we have to now go and select the option which which says frequency of checking and go to the next button which says after relative motion so you simply click over it okay so we have pressed over it we have kept the three amino acids selected so the next thing that we need to do is to minimize this uh, hindrance that has been there right so for that what you do is you go to tools you go to structure editing and then you go to this option which says minimize structure okay so you click on this option which says minimize structure whatever i'm doing keep sure or make sure that the changes that we will do it will appear on the left hand side of this uh, of this window of chimera so now what we need to do is you keep this steepest descent steps to 100 as it is okay uh, all the these are the default parameters so in the default parameters you go to this third option which says conjugate gradient steps so you keep it zero over here okay and then you have to choose this update interval so it will just change the locations of this side chains okay after 10 intervals but if you want to visually look uh, how the changes are happening what you do is you simply keep it two okay so every two steps it will change the locations of this okay now the next option that is very important for you to select is fixed atoms so we need to keep all the other amino acids fixed we don't need to move the other amino acids okay so we what we will do is you keep the left button pressed on this none and you go to unselected so all the amino acids which are unselected they will not be moving so we will be minimizing only these three amino acids in this case okay so as soon as i click on minimize few things will happen and whatever it is happening it will be shown over here on onto this uh, place on the left hand side of this main uh, chimera window at the bottom okay so we simply need to click on this minimize okay so now it is asking what we want to do keep all the things as it is you just press on ok so now what it is trying to do is it is trying to retrieve different rotamers for uh, it is trying to fetch different possibilities or probabilities from the rotamers library this can take up to few minutes uh, not few minutes but it can take up to a minute or two so we'll wait for a while uh, don't try to do anything else because uh, you can hang up the system so we'll wait for a while it is trying to retrieve rotamers from the dan bark library so we'll just wait for a while and at this point it is showing that there are the six contacts so there are six steric hindrances that have been observed over here okay so we'll wait for a while for this step to uh, accomplish
Rota mods are retrieved from this. Okay, so this window will open in front of you which says add hydrogen. So you simply need to do OK over here. So what it is trying to do is that it is adding hydrogen. So it is showing the status as hydrogens are now successfully added. And then the next thing it does it, it will assign the charges for minimization. So you simply choose guest tiger over here. Okay, and press OK. So now it says that 100 steps of steepest de descents have been starting. So as you can see, uh, still there are three contacts and if you just see the amino acids, they are slightly changing its orientation to align itself in such a way that the uh, restraints or constraints between them are reduced and such a way that it can overall, it can reduce the uh, steering hindrances. Okay, so we will wait for a while. Uh, still after 22 steps, two contacts are still there. We need this to become zero. Okay, so if this doesn't turn and it doesn't become zero means even after doing the minimization, this mutation or such kind of a mutation can actually hamper the uh, property of the active site of the protein. Okay, so as you can see, uh, as you can see clearly over here that as the decent steps are getting uh, increasing, it will it will try to check different orientations uh, in this petal arrangement in such a way that the contacts become less and less. Okay. Uh, if you want to improve the active site, okay, then this contact has to become zero. If it does not become zero, then the steering hindrance will stay over here. So in this case, if we are changing the amino acid, that amino acid is not actually going to help this protein. It is only going to degrade the overall property of this protein. Why? Because the steric hindrance is even after minimization, it is not getting close to zero. Okay. So we will wait for 100 steps to get done. We are at 72 right now. And every time when it is uh, doing the de decent minimization, uh, it is every time it is checking over here and still it shows that there are two contacts so we have reached up to 92 descent minimization steps 94 96 98 and 100 Okay, so we have tried our best to m reduce the minimization, uh, reduce the steric hindrance. But as you can see, in this active site, what is basically happening is that as we hover the mouse cursor over the amino acid, what is happening is that tryptophan, which is a mutated amino acid, which we have introduced a mutation into the protein, it is going to hinder with the uh, tyrosine 416, despite of all the minimization checks that we have done. Okay, so this is basically going to hinder the overall property of the active site, but we cannot still be 100% sure you have to perform the docking with this, this protein. So you what you can do is you can simply save this protein into the PDB format into the folder that we are working with. So uh, we will give the name 6CM4 mutated and minimized. So once you save this protein, what you need to do as a next step is to perform the molecular docking, right? With the reference drug, which is there. In this case, it is a Resperidone. So when we perform the docking, if you just go to my episode number one, when we perform the docking, the docking score was minus 12. So if after doing this mutation, if the docking score reduces to minus seven or minus six, or if the orientation of the ligand fitting it into the active site changes, Okay, then we can say that this kind of a mutation into the protein is not useful for the uh, interaction of the drug with the receptor. But in case if such kind of mutation and when you do uh, docking and if your score is improving like, like it is becoming minus 14, minus 16 and if you see the orientation of the ligand is identical to what it was with the original one on comparing, then we can probably say that uh, any kind of changes that we do is helping the interaction. Even after docking, we cannot be 100% sure. The next step 
after docking that we need to do to be fully satisfied with the claims is that we have to perform molecular simulation dynamics right and after we uh, satisfy the results in sim molecular simulation dynamics only then we can somewhat claim that the mutations that we do in the protein is either helping or it is not helping the overall cavity of the protein okay so i hope this video is helpful to you uh, thank you i will try to bring new updated uh, videos to you so that you can get better understanding of molecular biology and uh, proteomics yeah so thank you for bearing with me